It's the same, right? It's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Great. So look, you're, if, uh, were you 13 when you walked into my living room? It was about, yeah. about 13 years old. OK, well, this is great. I remember uh, the two things I remember about you. You were tremendously excited about music, so excited that you actually said you wanted to be a conductor. And I went to the piano, and you were, can you remember? Yeah. And the other thing was that your playing wasn't very good. 
<laughs> yeah. okay. So now what's happened is your playing has got fantastically good and it's brilliant and you've lost your joy and your excitement and your, you know, that 13-year-old sense of excitement that you brought into my room. I remember it clearly. I mean, this kid came in and he was wild. I mean, he, you know, he wanted to conduct and, and, and now you've become rather staid and proper and that's appropriate for your age. But now you have a, a, a two paths diverge in a wood and you could go into the, you're clearly going to be a professional musician and a very successful one. I have no doubt about that. But you could become one of those professional musicians who just does a good job, solid, reliable, professional, predictable. Or you could re-engage with that childlike quality that you used to have and become a real artist. And that's the question. And I think I know which one you want to do because otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right. You, so now the question is, how do we bring that back? One of the things you've got to do is to trust your playing. We sit in a practice room for hour after hour after hour after hour, like fools, you know, anybody coming from Mars and watching human beings draw a horsehair over gut, say, uh, what, what are they doing? Why? Why? Well, the answer is to learn to play so that you can bring this music alive. Right. That's the only reason. So you have to practice. But it's not about practicing, and it's not about getting the first chair position, and it's not about w winning the competition, as you know. This guy played Sancho Panza in the performance of Don Quixote on tour with us with the youth orchestra. It was spectacular. I mean, it was, he was Sancho Panza with all the humor and the, uh, all of that. So bring that to this. Right? Same thing, alive. So it's, the first piece is Corante. What does that mean? No, yeah, it's a dance, but what, what, what does corante mean? Well, running is what it means. So how come you play it so slow? Right? It's a fast piece. It's to show... Try that. Come over here so that we can be a little bit in communication. Yeah, you look miserable. I mean, you're playing so beautifully. Mm. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three. <laughs> That's great. This is jazz, actually. Bach was, you know Bach invented jazz. Did you know that? He did. He invented jazz. Beethoven invented rock and roll. <laughs> jazz, uh, Bach invented jazz. Because all these cross rhythms are, are just that. And he even slurs it that way. <laughs> Once again, from the beat. So, because the C goes to D. Right? One, two. Now, we are actors. We musicians are actors. So you may be feeling miserable, you may have a cold, you may be jet lagged, you may wish you weren't here, but for these people you've got to pretend you're having a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> so look, look at, and remember Bach had 20 children, had 20 children, I mean, what kind of a person do you have to have to, to be to be, have 20 children? All right, and most of them were musicians, imagine, imagine life in that household, oh my God. But, and he wrote music, all the time, all the time. Every week he produced huge amounts of music. I mean, it was just easy for him. Easy, no difficulty, right? And four. And then he goes to D.
Right, now if you play that well, make the repeat. If you don't play that well, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes I go to a concert and I, I'm sitting there saying, oh, I hope they don't make the repeat. I hope they don't make the repeat. And sometimes I'm sitting there, I hope they make the repeat. I, so it depends how you play, but that was great. And people were actually smiling more than you were. Right. They were doing great. That's it, go on. And find more jazz here. Yeah, sing that. Do you see? Do you see? Da di do do di do do di da do do di do do da di da di da da do do da do da da do do da da do do. Do you have you heard the swingle singer? Has anybody heard the swingle swingle singers? Who's heard the swingle singer? Swingle singers were a group of singers who suddenly realised that Bach was writing jazz, and so they rewrote his music in jazz, and it's great. They couldn't have invented that themselves any more than Sibelius could have invented that waltz without the Viennese origin. So this is going back to that original rhythmic intensity. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Three. <laughs> because we haven't had a D, we've had a C. Ta da! Yes, exactly. Now, you see, this gentleman came from Vermont and he doesn't know anything about music and he went, yes! Like that. Just when you went, yes! He went, like <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we Job. Our job is very simple. These two guys get up in Vermont. They, we've got to drive to Boston. This woman, South Africa, got to go to Boston. Well, she has a son here, that's an additional thing. But, <laughs> but when they get up in the morning and say, I've got to drive to Boston, I've got to drive to Boston, it's a long way, all that gas. <laughs> and then they arrive and they hear you play, and then they look like that. That's why we do what we do. That's just change people's lives. If you're not changing somebody's life, you're wasting your time. Isn't that amazing? Great, that was beautiful. Notice the playing is even better now than it was when he was worried. <laughs> so when we get ill, we take pills, right? We take drugs, we say take a pill for this and a pill for that, and the th theory is that you feel better. In music, don't take worry to play better. It's not a good drug. It's not a good drug. It's a hopeless drug. In fact, it's gonna make you play worse. And that's true of everything in life, actually. You do everything worse if you're worried. So that's something worth discovering. That's really terrific and something worth remembering. And you came all the way from Lausanne, 
well to see your friends and so on, but actually to hear that, to remind you. Because you knew that, that you forgot it. You forgot it. There's a wonderful moment in the magic flute when uh, Papa Gain is trying to kill himself and he puts a rope over a tree and then tries to pull himself up. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> but, um, and then he suddenly says these fantastic words, Ich na vergas der Zauberding. The fool I am, I forgot the magic thing. The magic thing are his bells. With his bells, he can create magic. But he forgot. Ich na vergas der Zauberding. You forgot the Zauberding. You forgot why you do it. You see? And that was beautiful. That was great. That was very exciting. Second movement. Next one. Bure. Good. Let me just stop you. This is another kind of dance. And you remember when I, were you here when I was working with the marimba? And you know, they were playing by the bar instead of by the phrase. Remember that? <coughs> this is the same thing. Because if you do ta ta tum, ba ba bum, bum, bim, ba ba bum, ba ba bum, ba ba bum, it won't dance. So the thing to do is to reduce the impulses by one. So instead of making an impulse on every bar, you make it on every other bar. Now, if that's the case, would you do da da dum ba ba bum bum bee or da da dum ba ba bum bum bee? Which would you do? Second one. Everybody chooses the second one. Why? Because the notes are higher. There's a big chord and even a trill. So da da dum ba ba bum 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 All that energy, right? We'll produce it. Actually. It's not the second one, because... That's the beginning, right? So just do that. Good, good, even more. So let me suggest you do this. Do da ba bum and then stop. Now do da da dum. No. Da da dum, ba da dum, bum bee, ba da da, da da dum, so da da dum, D E F. Right, and now imagine you it's a ball and you're throwing it to me. Throw, throw that, da ba bum. Yeah, but throw, throw it fast, so so I have to hear, ya ba bum. Now throw it right to the back of the park, right back here. Right, big throw, three. Now put the music in between. Three. There it is. We got it. Isn't that great? So that's the secret. Reduce the impulses. Reduce the impulses. Reduce the impulses. Don't do emphasis on every bar. Do it again. Three. Perfect. A little applause, please. Thank you. Now, <laughs> okay. Now, here, da 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 di, da da di. Okay. Now you have a phrase. Yeah, da 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 da. Isn't that right? Da ba ba da 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 di da da. Can you try that? Di 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 da 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 di da. Good. And now, and now put the other, other note. Di da da di. And is it ya ba 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 bi or ya ba 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 bi? Which is it? Second one, exactly. So, and then he goes to D and then to D. Perfect. And that was so beautiful that we want to hear it again, which is why Bach wrote a repeat sign. So, from the beginning, three. Now, Good. I have a, a very important uh, uh, distinction, I call it, which we call one buttock playing. This can only be demonstrated city, seated. Da da dum, ba ba bum, two buttock playing, one buttock playing. That's one buttock playing. Da 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 Now you're already standing, but I believe you can do one buttock playing even when you're standing. 
So when you get to try and give a feeling that you're going over the whole phrase. Ready? And before you begin, don't look worried. It's not an exam. From the beginning, and we're going to do it from the beginning. And when you get to this, you're going to play one buttock playing. And then you're going to repeat it because Bach loved it so much he wanted to hear it twice. And again, beautiful, good, beautiful, great. <laughs> Look how happy they look, the three brothers. Aren't they great? They're beautiful. Great, okay. <laughs> okay, stop up in. Next bar. Beautiful. That was very beautiful playing. You've got a D which goes to an E. So be a little bit clearer for them because they may not know what you're doing. Da, da, da. And then it goes to E. Try that. Yeah, good, good. Be very clear. Yes, tell, tell about the E. Oh, there it was. And look, his mother went, yes, yes. And she, saw, she heard it once again. Yes, was that beautiful? Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. God, bravo. You're a great musician. When you're let out of the cage, yeah. there's a cage. And look, we have to be very clear. Where does this cage come from? It comes from the past. It comes from your Jewish heritage, it comes from your father, it comes from the conservatories, it comes from colleagues, competitions, the whole ball of wax that we wise human beings have set up life as a measurement. Life as a measurement. Life is not measurement, life is a dance. Isn't that great? That's it. Yeah. So in the youth orchestra, you're not in the youth orchestra anymore, but do you remember every week I gave an assignment? Uh, this, this week's assignment I brought along, I'm going to give it this afternoon, Easter weekend, time of renewal for people. And this is the assignment. Open a space for other people to radiate spirit and love. Open a space for other people to radiate. Now these three guys, bless them you know, down from Vermont. They are radiating spirit and love because of you, actually because of Bach, actually not because of Bach. Do you know what Bach wrote when he finished a piece of music? Do you know what words he wrote? For the glory of God. Okay, now I don't believe in God. You don't need to believe in God, but something, possibility, we call it possibility, right? So something is available to us all, us human beings, every day, every minute of every day, that we can get access to, like electricity. We can plug the plug into that socket and get this reaction. Right? It's given to every human being. It's not certain people have it and certain people have, don't. Everybody has it. A lot of people have lost it. Most very small children have it, which is why we adore small children. Right? We can't resist pictures and films of little kids. How cute, right? <laughs> whoever they are. And then they grow up and the competition starts and the pressure and the anxiety and the parents say you got an A minus, how come you didn't get an A, right? That's the Jewish conversation. You got 95 on your paper, what happened to the other five? You know, the, the, quintessential, the quintessential Jewish mother, the quintessential Jewish mother gives two shirts to his son, her son. And then he comes down wearing one the next day and she says, what, what's the matter, you don't like the other one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's a conversation which you are living into. Right? And we have to work very hard not to live into that conversation because everybody else is living in it to, into it too. And particularly if you find yourself surrounded by a lot of people your same, same age who are competing for the same jobs and who are worried about money and who can't get on with their parents and whatever they're doing and fighting with their teachers and worried. And that's the conversation you're walking into. A leader is somebody who knows that that's happening and can do something about it. Right. 
Because just to know it is not enough, although it's a huge step to know about it. Oh, that's that old conversation that Mr. Zander was always talking about. We call it the downward spiral. Uh, and it's everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It stops when you die. It's one of the only really nice things about dying, finally. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> In the meantime, it is the conversation in every, every conservatory uh, hall, right? So, but it isn't the only conversation that's available. You know that, right? There's another one. We call it possibility. So now your job is to open a space for other people to radiate spirit and love. And then you play the way you're playing, and their faces will light up, and they'll go away, and they say, that was worth driving down from Vermont to here. Right? Isn't that right? And that's what we have to do. And we have to do it every time we play. Otherwise, it becomes a routine. And you have a choice. Routine is available to you. And I promise you, routine will give you a secure life. You know, you'll have a house and a car, maybe even a little fence around the house. <laughs> <laughs> the other way, I can't promise you anything. But I, I, what I do promise you is a joyous <coughs> life and a fully expressed life. And that's, after all, all that matters. Because when you die and they write on your tombstone, he had a white fence around his house, it's not quite enough. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> great, look, we, we've done it. We don't need to do any more. You're great. Thank you for coming back. You're one of those people I treasure because of the, what you represent and who you are. And you're just a fabulous person, a great musician, always searching, always searching, searching. And you know, he came back to play. He told me that he wanted to play in this class three months ago because he knew he was going to be here. He said, please, can I play in the class? It's really great. And here you are, and look. And now it's not only all these people in this room, but it's the people who Dave is picking up on the television. And they're going to watch. They're going to say, that's my life he's talking about. Isn't that right? Isn't that great? Thank you for coming. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Right, something. <laughs>